Very thankful for, again, this second worship assembly of the morning in your presence once again. We are thankful for an invitation song we'll be singing in a moment. We just spoke of or did sing of a home in heaven. Oh, they tell me of a home. I want to go there. You want to go there. And uh, thankfully, we can go there because God has made it possible for our souls to be saved. And how important faith is. Faith is the building block of Christianity. Whatever else we may do, if it's not built on faith, we are really wasting our time. Faith leads us to repent of our sins, realizing we're not perfect, realizing Jesus is, and what a pattern for our lives. Realizing that we confess Christ before men, that He is indeed the Son of God, there's no doubt about it. And then allowing somebody to take our bodies and immerse them in water just for a second. And we come forward washed, our sins washed away, and we are added by God to His church, having obeyed God, and that's a happy day indeed. If you need prayers of the church, having wandered away, or need prayers of the church, just needing encouragement, we'd be happy to go to God on your behalf, as we'll be singing in a few moments a song of invitation. This lesson is sort of trying to get us ready, pumped up for our gospel meeting. It begins this Friday with Brother Chris Hodges. I know most of us know Chris. Some may not know him. Some know him a lot better than others. Some have known him so well they changed his diaper when he was a baby. And you don't know anybody much better than that. And so Chris is the son of Keith and Faye and a nephew of Alvin and Linda. And we're looking forward to their arrival. Uh, he'll be bringing his family, his wife Ashley, and their two children, Laura and Matthew. And so in addition to our meeting, this is sort of an added bonus that they can visit with family. I know as a preacher and being away from, from home, you don't always get to be with family on special occasions like birthdays and anniversaries and things of that nature. So we're glad that he can do two things at once. And, and I, I know he'll appreciate that in his family as well. Chris is the evangelist for the Seely Church of Christ in Seely, Texas. Seely is about 10 hours from here or so, just west of Houston, to sort of give you a geographical location of where he'll be coming from. Our schedule, of course, this Friday and Saturday evenings, the meeting will begin at 6.30, the meal beforehand at 5.30. And I think the ladies took care of the particulars of that a moment ago in their meeting. And then, of course, Sunday, We'll have services then as we're doing that now. Bible class is at 9. Brother Chris will teach the class. First morning worship assembly at 9.50, second at 11. And Chris will preach both sermons for those. And then after all that, we'll have a fellowship meal here at the building for everybody. Uh, but if you want to eat, you'll have to stay for all services. So keep that in mind. We'll look forward to the fellowship, the food, the meeting, the worship. And it'll be a great, great weekend. Take just a moment to refresh our memory for why we have gospel meetings. Why? What are some reasons for gospel meetings? The Bible says in everything we do, we are to glorify God. Paul says whether you eat, whether you drink, or whatever you do, just name it, everything we do is to be done for the glory of God. And that's what we're going to be doing this weekend as we're doing now. This gospel meeting has as its prime objective to give glory to God. Under that great big umbrella of glorifying God, there are several sub-points or sub-reasons, you might say. We could talk about evangelizing. We're having this meeting this weekend to evangelize, to seek and save the lost through the proclaiming of the gospel. Give an opportunity for family, friends, co-workers, classmates who've never become Christian to do so by again hearing and obeying the gospel. It has been said that mission work begins where there is one lost person. I know there are many lost people overseas, but there are many lost people right here at our back door. What a golden opportunity we have then to invite, to encourage, to again be present ourselves and bring others to this wonderful event. We have sent out several invitations already, our Truth For Today paper, some 800 plus invitations in that, 53 invitations to area congregations, number of personal invitations have already been made, and we'll look forward to doing more of that in the time we have left between now and this weekend. We want to get the word out, this could be the greatest weekend of somebody's life if they come to Christ, obey the will of God, and become Christians. And so we want to let others know of this. 
We will be live streaming the meeting as we're doing in our services now. This for local people physically unable to be here. Again, emphasize that physically unable to be here. Also for people who may live miles away, but still can benefit, though they can't be here personally, they can participate in uh, the way of technology. And of course, we're going to be archiving Chris's lessons for Facebook and YouTube channel for watching later. So we can, again, pass the meeting along, even though it's over, we can still listen and benefit even after the meeting itself is over. So evangelizing obviously brings glory to God. Second, restoring the wayward brings glory to God. Paul says those who are spiritual, if a man's overtaken in a fault, our responsibility is to restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering ourselves, lest we be tempted to fall away also. Now, we have several at Verona, unfortunately, who have become slack in their spiritual service. And we want to reach out to them. This gospel meeting time is a time where a lot of people do some self-examination, some looking inward, and decide, you know what, I need to get right. I need to confess wrong. I need to rededicate my life back to the Lord and the church. I want to rekindle the spiritual flame that I once had in my life. I want to revive that first love that I've left. We have sent every delinquent member of this congregation a meeting invitation. So nobody can say we didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't know. Everybody should know because, again, of efforts already underway to remind. Another way to glorify God, to have a gospel meeting is to edify or strengthen one another. Paul says we are to build up or edify one another. Romans 14, verse 19. And what better time than a gospel meeting to do just that? To see one another, to see old friends, maybe make some new friends, to recharge our spiritual batteries, boost our morale, strengthen our faith, to exhort one another, as the Hebrew writer says, to love and good works. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. And there may be several other reasons, but these are four reasons why we are having the gospel meeting then this weekend. Now, for our meeting to be a success, we need to realize that we have some responsibilities to bring that about. Obviously, Chris is going to do his part in preaching the Word of God. Of that, there is no doubt. And yet, we have to pull our share of the load also. For somebody to be preaching the Word of God, others need to be listening to what is preached. And that includes me and you and every one of us. This is one of the most obvious and yet at times one of the most overlooked responsibilities that we have whenever the gospel is preached. And that's the focus of our study in the time we have left this morning, considering our responsibility then to listen during our meeting. Again, Brother Chris will do his responsibility in proclaiming the word. Will we do ours in listening to the word that is proclaimed? Here's an outline of study. Four brief points. We want to begin by talking about the wonder of hearing. And then the Bible speaks of three types of listeners. Which will we be? Third, some benefits of proper listening. We can't help but win if we listen properly is the idea. And then finally, we're going to wrap up by giving a few suggestions to help us listen better. So again, this lesson, the importance of listening. And let's just talk about, right off the bat, the wonder of hearing. Now we have sort of a, a graphic here of what some have called the ear and acoustic marvel. This is one of the handiworks of God in making us as human beings, the physical human beings we're talking about, and sort of a graphic, may not mean much to us. We may have learned in school a little bit about the ear, the outer ear, the middle ear, and then the inner ear, as we sometimes call them, but all three components make up the ear and are vital to our hearing. You may have memorized in school those three small bones that make up the, the, the middle ear. The hammer, can't see it back there, I'm sure, the anvil and the stirrup. The, handle, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. We're told that the stirrup 
is actually the tiniest bone in the human body, smaller than a grain of rice. But try hearing without it. It's, it's vital to hearing. We're told that the inner ear is sort of like a keyboard with 15,000 keys. We're told by those in the know that that is the number of different tones the ear is able to detect over 15,000 15, different tones. Unfortunately, as we age, our keyboard sort of declines, and I think we're, we're aware of that. Plus, if you have inner ear problems like vertigo, then you lose your balance. So the, the ear is more important than just for hearing. It helps in stability and other vital needs of the body. There is a difference, and we've talked about this before, but just as a reminder, there is a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is simply recognizing the sound of words, but sometimes we do that and don't pay attention to those words. We hear the words in one ear, out the other, as we sometimes say, but there's no processing the words in the meantime. And we've all done that. I mean, how many times did our parents tell us while we were watching a ball game, Take out the trash. We may have even said, yes, I will, but really never paid attention to the words we were told or go and do your homework and things of that nature. Yes, I will, but we actually don't. Now, of course, we know that this issue never arises in sermons. It never happens in sermons. I mean, we, we digest every single word that we hear. Not a word goes by, slips by the old gray matter up here. Well. I'm being facetious, and you know that I am. I'm guilty, you're guilty, we're all guilty. Uh, just for various reasons, sometimes because of distractions, sometimes because of other factors. But we want to do more than just hear, is my point. We want to listen. We want to listen. We want to concentrate on the words that are said. Our Lord had a lot to say about hearing. He often used this phrase, he who has ears to hear, that's most of us, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Our Lord said that when he came to John the Baptist, Matthew 11, when he discussed or gave the parable of the sower, Matthew 13, when he gave the parable of the tares, Matthew 13. Jesus wrote seven letters to the seven churches of Asia, and to every one of them, he said something like, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. The point of what Jesus is emphasizing is what I'm saying is very important. Concentrate, pay attention, listen up, as our teachers would sometimes tell us at school. On one occasion, Jesus said, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you, and to you who hear, more will be given. Everyone who has to him will be more be given. Whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. Again, Jesus had a problem in his day that we sometimes, a lot of times face in our day. A lot of folks just don't listen or don't listen with a view of understanding. Ask any teacher of any school and they have this issue as well. People sit in a classroom and they just sit there and they look sort of dumbfounded or out of it or whatever. You can tell that they're there in the classroom, but their minds, uh, they're out fishing or riding a bike or doing whatever. They're not attuned to really what is being said. So in our gospel meeting and in our services regularly for that matter, we want to not only hear, we want to, we want to listen. We want to engage both the ears and the mind is our point and thrust, our ears and the mind as the truth is taught. Now secondly, the Bible speaks of three different types of listeners. Two are not so good, only one is. Which are we? Which will we be? First of all, some listeners are what the Bible calls dull of hearing. Hebrew writer addressed something in his day. He's talking about Melchizedek in Hebrews 11. He says, I would like to tell you a lot more about Melchizedek, but some of these matters are hard to explain. 
especially because you have become dull of hearing, the King James says, that simply means you become poor listeners. I could, I could go on and on about Melchizedek, but I might as well stop because you're not interested, is the point the writer is making. You're not wanting to understand the truth of God, and so there's no need really to go further. We don't want to be this kind of hearer or this kind of listener. A second type of listener, or well, Matthew 13, Jesus is actually quoting Isaiah in Matthew 13. Isaiah had the problem. Jesus had the problem. Sometimes we have the problem. People seeing, they don't really see. They hear, but they don't hear with a view of comprehending or understand. And so he speaks of Isaiah's prophecy. You will never be hearing, but never understanding. You will ever be seeing, but never perceiving. This people's heart has wax gross, the King James says, or become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, their eyes they've closed. Otherwise they might see, they might hear, they might understand, and they might be healed. We don't want to be the kind of listener that simply pays no attention. We don't want to be hearers that are dull of hearing. Second, some listeners have what the Bible calls itching ears. This is not some type of skin problem. This is a spiritual problem. Paul addresses this in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Timothy, you need to preach the word, verse 2, because the time is coming when they will not put up with sound doctrine. After their own lust or desires, shall they heap to themselves teachers. The problem is they have itching ears. They'll turn away their ears for the truth, and they'll be turned unto fables. Simply stated, if I have itching ears, I want somebody to tell me what I want to hear may not be what I need to hear, but it's something that I want to hear. If I have itching ears, I don't want somebody telling me I'm a sinner. I don't want somebody telling me about hell and wanting me to straighten my life up and do right. If I have itching ears, I want somebody to tell me how good I am. I want to leave feeling good about myself. Well, if I'm right with God, I can leave feeling good about myself. But if I'm guilty of sin, I need to hear things that may not be pleasant, but things that I need to hear. Again, no doubt that Chris is going to be teaching sound doctrine. He's a sound preacher. But if I'm a, an itching ears listener, I'm not going to appreciate the truth that I'm being taught. And obviously, we don't want to have, to, to have itching ears. We don't want to be listeners dull of hearing, and we don't want to be listeners having itching ears I need to be man enough, woman enough, Christian enough to accept the truth, even when the truth may hurt my life. It hurts to help. Third, here's the kind of listeners we want to be. Some listeners have a good and noble heart, a noble and a good heart. In the parable of the sower, Luke chapter 8, Jesus spoke of this kind of hearer. Those on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, notice, Having heard the word, they keep it. That's not a dull of hearing listener. That's not an itching ear listener. Here are those who heard the word and they keep it and they bring forth fruit with patience. It has an effect in their lives because they paid attention and concentrated and listened with a view of bettering themselves. Paul says of uh, those in Berea, while they're more noble than those in Thessalonica, they received the word with all readiness of mind. They were eager listeners, and they searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. They again received the word with all readiness of mind. That simply means they were eager to hear the truth. And that's the kind of listener we want to be always and certainly in our upcoming gospel meeting. Point number three, Let's talk about some benefits of proper listening, of having a noble and good heart, as we just noted a moment ago. How's this gonna help me? What's in it for me, you might ask. We wanna know what's in it for us. Well, here's what's in it for us, if we'll properly listen. Obviously, number one, stating the obvious, we're going to be blessed. We are going to be blessed 
if we concentrate on the sermons preached. Blessed are your eyes, Jesus says, they see. Blessed are your ears, they hear. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but do not see it, and to hear what you hear, but do not hear it. He may have had in mind Abraham, Moses, David, and other Old Testament greats, and though, though they were great men and great women of the Old Testament, they really never had the complete truth about the Messiah and Jesus and all spiritual blessings being found in Christ, Ephesians 1 and verse number 3. And we have the advantage and the benefit of hearing things and seeing things they didn't have the privilege. We have the gospel. We have the completed crucifixion, the atonement for sins in, in reality. And again, that's something they look forward to. That's something we can appreciate in the present because Jesus has died for us. We're going to be blessed if we will properly listen. Second, our faith cannot help but increase by our being here and participating and listening. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. If I'm not hearing, I'm not believing. I need to be here to hear. To be here to hear, to be here to hear, to hear to, for my faith to grow and hearing by the Word of God. And so we gain faith, yes, by reading God's Word, but we also gain faith by pro public proclamation of the Word of God. And so we're going to be blessed. Our faith is going to increase. We're going to bear fruit. We cannot help but bear fruit. Luke 8, 15. Those on the good ground, again, are they who have an honest and good heart. They hear the Word, they keep it, and notice they bring forth fruit with patience. Bearing fruit comes from understanding the grace of God. And again, we'll bear fruit in our lives. We'll be a blessing to those with whom we're trying to work if we ourselves will do our part. We can't help but be better. That's why we have gospel meetings, to better ourselves. One reason, at least, this weekend. Fourth, we're going to avoid drifting. If we properly listen, this will help us avoid drifting. Sometimes in our regular worship services and gospel meetings, we may bemoan, no responses. Nobody responded. But do we overlook the response of Christians remaining faithful? That is a response, folks. It may not be visible to the eye, but for somebody to be built up in the faith, encouraged edified and strengthened, that is a response and a purpose of preaching. Keeping the saved saved is a response. If we properly listen, we will avoid drifting. The Hebrew writer said, we must give the more earnest heed. We must properly listen to the things we have heard. If we don't, we will, King James says, slip. Other translations written of that, we will drift away drift away. It's been said one of the first steps to apostasy is not shaking one's fist toward heaven and cursing God or quitting the church, but one of the first steps toward apostasy or drifting away is poor listening. Poor listening. Something to think about. A benefit of proper listening. Fifth, we will avoid condemnation. If we do not listen as we should, we are judging ourselves unworthy of eternal life. As Paul said in Acts the 13th chapter to some Jews who were trying to hinder his, his and Barnabas' work, he said it was necessary the word of God should be spoken to you first. Gospel of the Jew first. But since you rejected, you don't want to hear it, you have judged yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. We're going to people who will listen. We're going now to the Gentiles. Jesus said, if we reject the gospel message, the men of Nineveh and the queen of Sheba will condemn us at judgment day. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Why? While they repented at the preaching of a prophet named Jonah, but a greater, a far greater than Jonah is here, talking about himself, Jesus. The queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Why? She came from a long way, the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, a far greater than Solomon 
is here. Those men of Nineveh repented after hearing just one sermon. Just one. What about us? After being given numerous opportunities to hear the gospel, what is our response? The queen of the south went to great lengths to hear the wisdom of Solomon. You commend her for that. Are we willing to go a short distance to hear the gospel in our meeting this weekend? These are wonderful benefits. We cannot help but be better if we are here and participate this weekend in our gospel meeting. And then finally, we want to wrap up in a positive sense, giving some suggestions of advice to help us better listen better. And this for me as much as anybody. Second, we need to remember that listening is an act of worship. You may be thinking, well, wait a minute, I thought there were five acts of worship. I know that, that teaching and preaching is one of the acts of worship. Does that make listening a sixth act of worship? No, it does not. Because again, the preaching and the, te the teaching and the listening are all one. As I preach, I am listening. I'm listening to myself, listening to the Word, the Word of God. For teaching and preaching to be effective, it takes a speaker, yes, it takes listeners, yes, also you cannot have one without the other. And how we listen to God's word is just as much an indication of our devotion to God as our singing, as our praying, as the Lord's Supper, as our giving. It too is a vital act of worship, how we participate whenever the word of God is preached. We want to listen with a worshipful attitude and realize it does take effort to worship. It takes effort. Second, let's try to pay attention from start to finish. I know there are times there are distractions, and, and, and we've all been there and done that. We understand that. Things that come up, but we want to do our best to concentrate on what's being said and try to weed out any, any thoughts that may arise in our minds or distractions that may, that may come up. Pay attention from start to finish. If you read a novel, you don't read a sentence here and then turn several pages a sentence later. You're not going to get much out of a novel or book reading a sentence here or there. If you watch a movie, again, the movie won't mean much if you pick it up about midway through or just uh, pay attention to a line here and a, again a line. They're the same with, with regards to the Word of God. As we listen, we keep things in their context. Words and phrases and sentences must be heard in light of the context in which they are presented. And so, listen from first to last or start to finish. Pay attention. Use the Bible. This is such a, a crucial thing and again, so often overlooked. And it doesn't matter what format Bible you have. If you have it electronically, use that. Some prefer that. I prefer, I'm the old school, I have my physical copy of the Bible. I like to write in it. I like to hide, highlight in it. If, you're, if you like to take notes, maybe outside your Bible, bring a pad, a pencil. It helps in concentration. We like visual aids in sermons, yes, but the Bible is the best visual aid that you can use. So get in the habit. Bring your Bibles to every service and every service of our gospel meeting. Listen with faith and also listen with a view to do. Listen with faith, a witness to accept and believe what is shown in God's word and not like the people in Ezekiel's day. God talked to his prophet Ezekiel, said Ezekiel, and I'm paraphrasing here, I know people are coming to listen to you in droves. They're thronging you whenever you speak. But God said, Ezekiel, I also know, though, why they're coming. The only reason they're listening to you is because you have a pleasant voice. That's the only reason they're listening to you. Because, Ezekiel, they hear your words. They have no intention of doing what you're saying. You see, Ezekiel was the entertainment of the day. If they had something better to do, they would not have come to hear Ezekiel. That, he was just their entertainment. He had a way with words. He could say things in ways that they liked, though they didn't pay attention to the words he was telling them. And so, listen with faith. 
Listen with a view to do. James says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. I want to hear this weekend, but I want to hear and ask myself, how can I be better because of the things that Chris will bring from God's word? I hope that we are looking forward to Friday. It'll be here soon. 5.30 to eat. 6.30 to eat. Eat the Word of God. Feast upon the Word of God is the idea. Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. These meetings go by fast. I mean, they go by awfully fast. But we will be the better. We want to... Surely we've cleared our schedule. I know life is busy. These are in the evenings when most are off work. Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. Spending precious, precious time with God, God's people, and God's Word. It'll be a great meeting again all for the purpose of glorifying God through evangelism, upbuilding others, restoring the wayward. We will glorify God, Lord willing, this weekend. I'm looking forward to it. I know you are as well. This morning, if you need to respond to Jesus, we have given God's wonderful plan of salvation. God loves us, longs to save us. If we need to respond as we stand, as we sing, won't you?